Welcome to Bird Brains. <laughs> this is episode 18. 18. John Colby, that's John We're legal. We can, buy, we, we can buy cigarettes now and lottery tickets. Oh, we can. Yeah, we can. We'll be right back after this message. <laughs> And we're back. Uh, we just lost forty dollars in the lottery. Yeah. Um, but we've got a nicotine high. But yeah, yeah, I'm feeling great. I'm and feeling a severe great. gambling problem now. Right. Yeah. 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 But I, I, I feel like if I play one more round, I'm gonna win it all back. It'll yes. all be the next one. Uh, it's always nothing. on the next one. Always on black. Hey, always with us is JoJo. And hey, uh, if you JoJo. weren't with us last time, uh, the newest member of the Bird Brains is Connor Daly. Connor, how are hey. you, sir? I'm great. How are you guys? Driver of the number 18. Number 18. Dale Coin Racing, sponsored by Jonathan Birds. Never. Fried chicken special. Oh, the, no, man. Oh, yeah. I cannot wait for <laughs> the, the first race. And the mac and cheese. <laughs> yeah. Mac and cheese. Coming up, we're about about two months away from the first race. March 11, 12, yeah. 13. Yeah. So you've got yeah. some testing coming up here soon. Lots of days, yes. End of January. Uh-huh. Uh, we've Where are you got, going? Like, We've got Sebring, uh, okay. maybe. I haven't. I, I'm supposed to get confirmation of that tomorrow. Whether cool. you're on Sebring. So you're gonna like test drive a sweet like 1999 Sebring convertible? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a <laughs> fully loaded 2002 Honda Civic. Right. Yeah, fully loaded. Premium entertainment packages. Nice. Um, no, yeah, we've we've got our our. Uh, we only get a certain amount of days uh, per year that we're allowed to test uh, before the season and during the season. So it's like 12. 14 days total. Why is that? That they limit the number uh, of days? Costs. Okay. Cost cutting, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because it's quite expensive to put race cars on track. Ask, ask uh, Jonathan. Mm-hmm. Um, but, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. We, um, Confirmed. Exactly. So, yeah, we'll, we'll have a... February will be the busiest month, which will be nice because I, I can't wait to get things going. And then in February, we're in... We've got Media Day, February 2nd. We've got all of our physicals to make sure we're not doing drugs and all that stuff to race. Mm-hmm. And then open test end of February, which is like two days in Phoenix testing and just getting ready. And then once March hits, we're, we're racing. So it's it's, it's going to be really cool. Okay, so media day. Have you done that kind of stuff before? Sort of, yeah. Yeah, a few a few different variations, yeah. I feel like you'll do very well. Cause, Thank you. Because when, you, when you. you watch some people, <laughs> you can tell they're real rigid. And, like, obviously they'd rather just be in the car and not worry about talking yeah, to people and stuff like that. like that. Yeah, but, like... I feel like I feel like you'll do well, and I'll try to say words. Maybe get back to the <laughs> maybe get to the point where you're like too comfortable, and like hey hey man, be cool, be cool. Yeah, yeah. oh chill. Like, like well, you guys want to party? No, yeah. oh, I mean, are we I'm, not partying no. right now? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. That's Whoops. cool. Could be a trap. Yeah. Hey, speaking of partying, uh, welcome to this <laughs> week's installment of Connor Daly's Twitter. Uh, I'm now appears. looking uh, at a a picture of you hanging out with. Uh, Let's see, Utah Jazz slash Butler Bulldog slash Brownsburg Bulldog, mm-hmm. uh, Brownsburg. Gordon Hayward. Um, and it says, uh, but I had to support uh, my defining sports comrade. What is defining sports? So that's St. Vincent Sports Performance on the northwest side. That's mm-hmm. where uh, that's where I train. I've trained there since I was 12, probably. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so I, I've been going there ever since I was a child to be physically fit. And, uh, and last year, or... Yeah, last year-ish, whenever the NBA offseason was, we're, we're sort of in season when the NBA offseason is. Gordon trains there, too, because okay. he's, he's obviously from here, and he's yeah. got a place here. And uh, so Gordon, uh, we, we trained every day together because that's when he went in, and that's we, we became friends, and uh, and I play a lot of Xbox with him. He's, he's like a huge <laughs> gamer. So, that's awesome. And I, like, I, I didn't understand, actually, how much Xbox he played, and then I like saw him online like more than I was, and I thought that that wasn't <laughs> possible because... When I didn't have a full time IndyCar ride, I was like, oh, "There's a lot of Xbox going on here too," <laughs> and it was really funny. So he's, uh, yeah, so he's a he's a good dude. Now, what do you play on Xbox? What's your favorite? Games? I play. I'm a big Halo fan. I've been I played Halo ever since the first game, and then I met the uh, the people who made it like last year, and I was like the biggest super fan ever, more, <laughs> more than any other celebrity ever. Really? I was like, these people made Halo. This is these are, like, the best people ever. Yeah. So you know I what's play crazy a lot of about Halo. games is like they have these professional gaming leagues oh, yeah, that yeah. feel that Gordon feel owns stadiums. a team. Does he Gordon really? Gordon owns a Does like really? professional video gaming team. That's yeah. hilarious. And That's these wild. people make more than all of us. Like all <laughs> really? Of us. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. 
Have you ever been to or heard of Ebash? It's one of those kind of gaming places on the. It's on no. the northeast side of Indy. My friend uh, is one of the. I like, fit in well there, though. Co-owners of the place. It's right over by Castleton Mall, whatever. Uh, but you can go in there any time of day or night, yeah. and they're just. Individual people just oh, yeah, sitting yeah. at computers, just cruising, playing games for hours. I'm like, do they like rent the space to be able to play? Yeah, Is that you, how you make the money? Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, you, it's oh, it's so weird. People just go in there just to game, and because they, they have all these different games and stuff like that. I'm like, and good internet. That's the main thing about gaming these days. Oh, is that what it is? Internet strength. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. But yeah, I mean, people just go in there and they have, they have <laughs> I these live big the country, competitions. I satellite internet. I've never been able to play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My internet sucks. It's like poverty internet, something like that. Oh man. Nowhere. Life is hard for us, you guys. It is. It's How am tough. I supposed to stream Netflix on two devices at once? <laughs> yeah, that's essentially what I complain first about. First world yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Man, problems. my life is so hard. Yeah, why can't I competitively online game while streaming Netflix <laughs> Avatar in 3D on my wall? You know? <laughs> right? I don't get it. I on just my don't. curved television. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you. For those so fortunate. Oh, man. <laughs> With the surround sound. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> So, and 3D glasses. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so scrolling through here, there's all sorts of different pictures of different things, and there's, um, there's like you from racing different events in different places. I do um, some racing every I, now and then. I've, I've heard when you're yeah. not busy hanging out with celebrities or playing video games, playing Destiny, yeah, right. Um, so let me just ask, like, what's what's some of your most memorable racing events? Like all the way back from ten years old to now, what kind of things stick out in your brain? Is like I'll never forget that. Oh, I mean, my first Indianapolis five hundred. That's that's the best thing ever. I mean, I that's my home race. It's where I I I've never missed a race since birth until I, until two thousand twelve when I was racing in Monaco on the same weekend. So I kind of had to do that. But uh, that event was like awesome. Twenty thirteen, my first ever five hundred. I was driving for AJ Foyt, which was really cool. Um, and just, I mean, it's like every, it just means everything to you as a human being. Like you, we all grew up loving motor racing and Indy, Indy car racing and the Indy 500. And yeah. I watched it so much that I just, I, I knew I was like, ah, oh, that's just, I knew everything about it. And then I was finally in it and I was like, this is weird. This is, this is awesome. Like this is, this is, this is everything I thought it would be. It was like the most amazing experience ever. So it's just, it's one of those things. It was like a drug. It's like, I have to do this more. Yeah. I have to do this like all the time. Like I have to try and do this all the time. And, um, and it just kind of set a big, like that was my only IndyCar race that year. And ever since then I was like, man, I would, I would love to do anything I could do to be back there, like in a full-time basis and just be there trying to win that race, you know, yeah. every year. And so it's, that's definitely the most memorable. And, and, you know, I've, there's, there's plenty of other awesome, you know, there's, there's been some great times in my career but I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing better than the Indy 500 for sure. Without a Preach doubt. it, brother. Preach it. Yeah, right. exactly. Amen, right. yeah. So, so, but you, so you mentioned 2012. You missed your first 500 because you were at Monaco, yeah. racing in Monaco. So, you know, hopefully there's a couple. Maybe again, a couple. hold on. Again, first world problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I was racing in Monaco, so I couldn't even watch the race. I always race yeah. traditionally. <laughs> so, but uh, you know, there, there's probably a couple listeners, and they might be interested in racing. So. Actually, never having been to Monaco, but always, you know, that's the that's the pinnacle of Formula One and that, <laughs> that weekend and everything. What is what is that like? What is Monaco like? Uh, I mean, it's rich, and <laughs> I did not fit in there. I did not have enough boats, property, or Lamborghinis or anything to fit in there, or gold watches. Or, I mean, it's just there's just so much wealth there. You just walk. I mean. We had to stay like in Nice, France, like oh. four, forty minutes. Away. No, no, no. First world yeah. problem. No, but this is like poverty, France. Like this was like there's no Wi-Fi. You had like a bagel for breakfast. That was Again, like, not, not a bagel. <laughs> These are still first no, no, world no. problem. This is uh, a croissant. Yeah, no, but European breakfast is so dumb. Like America is the best. Like we have we have real things for breakfast over there. They give you dried meats and like weird jellies and stuff. And it's oh, like really? I don't want to have any of this for breakfast. So. Oh. Yeah, that's why I love America so much anyway. But the just the food. America. Yeah, just the food and, <laughs> and, and everything America. awesome. But yeah, Monaco was crazy. I mean, cool to cool to race there for sure. Cool to say that we did it. And, now, was that uh, the weekend you had your terrible crash Yeah, there? yeah. I almost ended up in the sea uh, during that race, um, which was not fun. You came out uh, of the tunnel, right? Yeah, I came out of the tunnel and launched over another fella. And it's on YouTube if you want to see yeah, it someday. Really, but. Yeah. It was it hopefully had, the Wi-Fi is strong enough yeah. to be able to watch it. Yeah, in your catamaran. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that got two million views on YouTube in like a week, and everyone thought I died. But I was cool. I was fine. So, 
that was my interesting first Monaco experience. <laughs> and the second time I raced in Monaco was on a Saturday, and I tried to get, this was 2014, I tried to get back to Indy for the race on the Sunday, and I got like the earliest flight out uh, on on Sunday of the race, and I thought I was going to make it, like, scheduling-wise, I was going to land in Indy on race day at 11.30, oh 30 gosh. minutes away. I was like, I'm going to make it. You're yeah. a helicopter? I'm going to make it. No, no, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> and I got to Chicago, or I, I got on my flight in London, and it was, like, two hours delayed, and I was just sitting there oh, wanting no. to, like, hang myself. Like, this is horrible. I just want to be there for race day. I ended up watching the race in a Chicago airport bar. And I was like, wow, <laughs> this is so much less fun. And I walked into the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on race day, 30 minutes after the race had finished with my suitcase through the, through the main gate as everyone's coming out drunk. I walk in. Hey, guys, I'm ready. You know I'm, the I'm walk machine. Again. I'm here. Yeah. We can start the race now. I literally now. walked straight to the motorhome lot, and all my friends who just got out of the race are like, what are you doing here? I'm like... I mean, I'm here to party I'm now. Here, right? <laughs> yeah, like, what, what are you guys doing here? You're like, well, we're sunburnt. We've been up since 4 a.m. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, we're going to call it a day. And the drivers were like, weren't you in Monaco yesterday <laughs> racing? And I was like, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> About that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so, it was funny. Uh, so what are the differences in the in the, the styles of racing? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a different world. Europe, uh, I went over there to try and become a better driver, be as good as I could be, no matter what, you know, no matter if I went to Formula One or IndyCar. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I, I got over there, and after a year, you know, I signed with the Formula One team, uh, you know, as a development driver, and, and everything was kind of, you know, learned a lot, got to do a lot of, um, you know, interesting work with with the Formula One team, Sahara Force India, it was called. Uh, did a lot of, you know, development on their car, on their simulator, on their, um, you know, in their shop. Uh, and it was really cool. It was a really good experience. Um, you know, and, and as a driver, the racing over there was, you know, extremely competitive. Um, a little bit deeper fields uh, in the in the in the in the series on the way up towards the top uh, than we might have here in Indy Lights or the or the or the series kind of leading up to IndyCar. IndyCar here has like the most stacked field ever, oh, yeah. but like on the way up, it's it's not quite as many cars as they would have in Europe yeah. on the way up. So. Yeah. There was like you know twenty seven cars every race and everyone could win and it was like it was really really tough um, but it was good to fight against the best people over sure. there and like the guy you know the the two guys that I uh, that I fought for the championship with uh, in twenty thirteen which is my last like full year over there mm -hmm. um, you know now drive for Red Bull in Formula One so that so they were you know I was leading the championship to the last race and I got taken out by an idiot and they won and I finished third in the championship so I was like. Oh well, you know that was one of those things, but uh, but it was cool to you know fight with those guys, and you know it was a good learning experience overall. And that that's kind of the the main difference, really, is is how people compare it. Okay. Did you yeah. did you become as a Formula One test driver? Was that really? Is there any applicable to IndyCar at least in learning how to become a better feel for an IndyCar? You yeah, know everything. I'm saying like you just yeah. you know. Like, for instance, Dario Franchitti became a very, very good, you know, he could take a turn and have nine sections in a mm -hmm. turn. And he could tell you, you know, the entrance of a turn is one and the exit of the turn is nine. And he could tell you what the car did in section four. It was doing something totally different than section five. It's how defined and it's just the experience that he had. Is that the it's that type of thing that you kind of start feeling as you get more and more experience? And Absolutely. Get, kind of yeah, an I mean, that's... Like that? That's uh, any any time you spend in any race car is is um, is valuable learning experience no matter where you go. I mean, IndyCar is is the top level. I mean, that is that is the top level of of you know this hemisphere of the world yep. and this this you know this side of of our world in North and South America and and you know e even in you know you, you put any of the top IndyCar drivers in Formula One and you know they're going to be competitive and the same if you if you took the top drivers in Formula One and put them in IndyCar they wouldn't just walk all over us you mm -hmm. know we're we know what we're doing over here too. And, and, and that was the cool thing to kind of get, get experience over there. And it's been a long road to like, to get to where like we finally, I do finally have a season of IndyCar racing to apply all that I've learned. Mm -hmm. I was hoping to finally have a day where I could say, Oh, it was all worth it. All the tough times in Europe, all the stuff that we went through, all the, you know, just the, the kind of nitty gritty, like the, just grinding it out. Uh, I was hoping to finally say, oh, man, it's all worth it. Now we've got a full-time position in IndyCar at the top of a sport, and we can just go and work at it. 
and we finally have that, you know, yeah. thanks to you guys and, 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 and all the Dale coin racing team. So, uh, it was all worth it. You know, I could have stayed here in 2011, 2011, I was sharing, uh, an Indy lights seat with Brian Clawson, our teammate. Right. And, uh, and I was leading the Indy lights championship after I just won the pro Mazda championship, which is the championship just below that. And everything seemed to be going right. Like everything was kind of on my way to IndyCar and I left to go to Europe to like, just be there for four years. And it was like, I remember Graham Rahal called me. I was at the airport and he was like, are you sure you want to do this as you're leading? Like as you're literally on the verge of being coming of an IndyCar driver at 18, I was 18 yeah. at the time. Yeah. And I was like, well, that would have been cool to do that at 18. But now I'm 24 and now I have finally made it like all these years, you know, later. And it's like, a it's like, you know, we almost didn't, but, yeah, but I think yeah. now I'll, I'll be in a much stronger position starting out rather than not knowing all that I, you know, know now, um, you know, back when I was 18. So, so you won the lights race in Long Beach yeah. in 11 and then leading the championship and then you left. Yeah. And I left. What, yeah. Said, After what did you races. say to Graham when he said, are you sure you want to do this? I like, said, man, I have to do it. I just, I have to, I have to try. Because okay. you only have one shot at making it in Formula One, and and there were no, there are no Americans in Formula One. There were no Americans in Formula One, so I had to try and make it, and uh, <laughs> and I did, and I tried. I gave it a shot. That's awesome. Yeah. So, do you think you're an expert in IndyCar racing? Uh, no. no, no, and no. you know what? Wait, like like it's, history and facts? No, I'm or, just oh. saying an expert. And you know, business owners don't have time to be experts in Obamacare. Oh, nobody oh. does. Nobody <laughs> does. No one. That's craziness. Who, Except who, one company. Who? What company does that? Tilson uh, HR. That, <laughs> tell me more about Tilson HR. Well, you know, you, you can't be an expert in Obamacare and be a, running a successful business. So keep your business compliant with Tilson HR's integrated management solutions. You know how you learn more about that? You talk to Tilson.com. That's talk to Tilson.com and do it today. Talk to Tilson. Oh, it's my jam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love it so much. It's uh, the jam. You can buy the that jam. on iTunes. You can get that on iTunes. Or on Spotify? It's uh, not on Spotify, not Spotify yet. Spotify. We don't have a contract yet, but it's uh it's one of those it's a dollar twenty nine because well, it's one of the good songs. Oh, that's that's good. Well, you know, you you talk uh Connor talked about racing for Sahara, Sahara Force India as a test driver in Formula uh, One. Mm -hmm. Interesting story. You guys heard about Air India. I have not. Air India is their national no. airline in India. I've been to India uh, once. You've been to India a couple times, yeah. I'm guessing. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, not my favorite place. You know, I'm not going to God lie. bless, you know, those people. You yes. Know, you know, if you put everybody in America and you put them east of the Mississippi and you quadruple the population, that's India. East of the Mississippi? Oh, wow. Yeah. I agree, yeah. Charlie Brown. That's yes. a lot. That's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But uh, an Air India flight just recently had to turn back after a rat was spotted on board. <laughs> That's crazy, right? And they, you know, they were flying to London. They were forced to return to Mumbai, which was Bombay, before it was changed back to Mumbai, after passengers spotted a rat on board. Uh, though the rat was not found, the pilot returned to Mumbai on Wednesday, keeping passenger safety in mind. Wait, was hold this on. like they a never, monster <laughs> rat? They didn't find they never, So there no. was a rat. So that means somebody dropped a small purse and somebody thought it was a rat. I thought you were going to say something else besides Was small Samuel purse. L. Jackson there? And freaked out. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Plane. <Yeah. laughs> well, maintenance workers, they had to make sure the rat didn't cause any damage or chew the wires. And the plane had to be certified rodent free, and it was. An airline official said. This is from the Associated Press, by the way. India's cash strapped national carry had two other mishaps, unfortunately, the same day. Oh, dear. An Air India pilot aborted takeoff from a northern Indian city, uh, Indian city after a stray dog ran onto the runway as the plane was taxiing. That sounds familiar. Really? <laughs> yeah, I was racing in India, and a wild boar crossed the track as we were racing. Or well, you can't right run, in front you of can't us. stop it because that's basically no, a, no. a god. Yeah. You know? So you can't yeah. you can't take out you can't take out a boar. It became a new chicane. <laughs> uh, wait, so for real, like. A How did that happened? Yeah, that was real. <laughs> Hashtag okay, I guess, that happened. I, guess like, I, swear, in, I will never forget it either. <laughs> growing up in Indianapolis and like racing on like, I mean, it's just it's huge. Like, um, yeah, it's just so. I guess you go to some places and there's not a giant track with a giant fence around it a and then castle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And a well, giant, there's been animals pagoda. hit at the speedway before. Didn't Bobby Unser or somebody hit oh, a yeah, squirrel? Maybe. If they're lucky, down the back yeah. stretch. But a squirrel's not going to hurt your car. Yeah. Whole, I mean, it could hurt your car. A wild but, boar's yeah. going to kill you. No, like, <laughs> a wild boar will like spear you. Yeah, you'll hit it and it'll like shake it off and come and attack yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Like, Whoa, all right. I've seen Lion King. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Hakuna Matata. Okay. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> there was another incident there in Indiana. Uh, that Air Indiana 
Indiana. Can't stop Air saying Indiana. That. And Air India plane from <laughs> Mumbai different. was also hit by a catering van at the Newark, New Jersey airport. Was it you guys? No, no, we don't cater in New Jersey. <laughs> All right. New Jersey. Darn it. New Jersey. New Jersey. And uh, two weeks ago, also, an Air India technician was sucked into an aircraft engine and killed at oh Mumbai goodness. airport. It was described as a, quote, freak accident, unquote. That sucks. <laughs> so um, I would suggest uh, maybe not flying Air India. Yeah, you're saying. I'm good. Yep. Just because. Okay. I thought this was a real weird segue to a new sponsor for the show. <laughs> <laughs> Although if they are interested in sponsoring a car at the end of the show. Contact. You can reach I out know, to Connor yeah. at, at Connor Daily yeah. on Twitter. I know a guy. <laughs> All right. So what would it have been like you saw that, you know, that, that rat on the plane? Well, you know, can we let's 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 well, that out and see what we first of all I, I need to know was it wasn't actually a rat. I mean, it sounds like there was no actual passenger rat. spotted a rat on board, <laughs> but the maintenance people looked for it and never but found it. Out. Were the passengers sober? Exactly. Is my Did somebody lose a toupee? <laughs> <laughs> and the wind of the plane hat, just yeah. made it, <laughs> or just like a. Or was it a small dead mouse? Oh. Uh, that's for people oh, who were the wild. Maybe it was the <laughs> jokesters. They brought the rubber rat onto the Oh, yeah. yeah. So it could have been one of those. It could have been. Well, that's craziness. So. We, we have been we have been looking for the through the entire plane for the last 45 minutes, what? and we have not found anything. Are you sure there was even something on there? How much could we get for that rat? <laughs> I never thought about actually trying to sell it. But first, we must obtain the rat. We have, we have not even located it. If we locate the rat, then we can sell it for whatever you'd like to sell it for. You know, he could be a he could be a terrorist. Free drinks. A rat on a plane. Uh, Do damage on the plane. <laughs> my my accent's terrible. This is going, this is going nowhere. A rat bomber. Uh, Gentlemen, I need you to return to your seats and I'm stop worrying about the rat. Please and thank you. Exactly, yeah. Get away from the bar. Yeah. Seriously. Uh, okay. They do have open bars though on those new A three eighty airplanes, the double the double oh, floor really? airplanes. So I could see that if people are upstairs at the bar and someone drops a you know a fancy lady purse with whatever kind of animal on it. <laughs> see, that's what I'm saying. And fancy people are a little purse. bit turned up on whatever they're drinking. Well, I can see know, it happening. It's gonna this week will be National Irish Coffee Day. <gasps> oh, did you buy it? I'm from Ireland, so yeah. Old dad will be having his lucky charms and Irish coffee in the morning. <laughs> so what's your dad like? Uh he's bald. Now we really rounded him out yeah. as a human being. Yeah. Hey, poor guy, he showed up to Germany one year when I was racing, and I'd never seen him he, ever since I became of existence in the world, he has had the same haircut. And he showed up to Germany bald. And I was like, Dad, I mean, did you get cancer? Or like, <laughs> what? Oh, like, are you okay? What a terrible like, way what's to going find on? out. He's like, no, but that's oh, a good question. If you know, had the same thing like, for 20 like, years yeah. or whatever. What in the world? And he's like, oh, no, I just wanted to try something new. I was like, okay. And he's stuck with and it. And ever since then, he's just, yeah, he's been a low downforce setup on the, on the old skull. <laughs> So he shaves like the sides, every like the whole thing. thing. He is to he looks like a gnome or so like a bald gnome. It's really weird. <laughs> that's well, fun. that's interesting because but I love him. I've got hey, a dad. story about uh, an Idaho man. No, 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 not, not, yet. Not, yet. not yet, not yet. There's an Idaho yeah, man. Yeah, my dad's cool. By Speaking the way, of <laughs> hair or lack thereof or mm -hmm. an excess amount, that's me. An Idaho man finds uh, he finds art in his back hair. One one man's back hair is another man's canvas here in Nampa, Idaho. Nampa. Nampa, Idaho. Nampa. It's like Tampa, but not with a T, but, but nope. an N. Yep. That's how Mike Wolf of Nampa, Idaho, has decided to approach manscaping. He tells KTB, KTVB Television that after years of feeling ashamed of his body hair, he asked a friend in 2008 to trim an American flag on his back rather than undergoing hair removal processes like shaving or waxing. Since then, the two meet up several times throughout the year to design a new creation onto Wolf's back. I know what they're doing. <laughs> What I are know. they doing? I'm not allowed to talk about it on this show. <laughs> yep. The fine people at Tilson wouldn't, wouldn't approve of that. So uh, some of the creations they've done are now seen at, on a calendar called Calend Hair. Oh, dear. No, available that's for $20. This makes me too mad. Much. Some this proceeds will benefit that a charity in the South? at Wolf's Church. Only. <laughs> it's own. They produce it in Idaho. They well, ship yeah. them all down. A lot of freedom down there. To Mississippi. Designs <laughs> are uniquely named, such as the Grim Repair. For October and yeah. the in May they do the Maharachi mm, band. Oh, so yeah, well, that you know. Wow. I guess I'd rather be bald than have excessive back hair, which I can create. You know, different. I feel, I would feel 
about as American as I could be, though, if I had like an American flag. Back shaved <laughs> into my back hair. Yeah, that's that's it's the new and, tattoo. It's not oh, and just, colored, and they dye wow. it. And they dye it. Yes, I would then have to have a giant golden eagle from shoulder to just hip. Hair. Yeah, just no tattoo. Oh, just tattoo. tattoo. Yeah, yeah. I, shoulder I wanted, to hip. Oh, uh, yeah. I wanted yeah. to dye it. I wanted to dye it all and chest hair on the front. If you like, like on an old like. I still haven't got to that point bird. in my life yet, so I can't. I don't. I can't do that. Yeah. Oh, but, co- but congrats. I don't mean to brag. <laughs> no, listen, oh, we're job. talking about hair. I'm going to go there. Um, so I'm I'm hair suit, which is the word. All right, I'm leaving. <laughs> Real hairy guy. No, no, I'm not taking my pants off. Uh, <clears throat> so like um, I have I have like I, I grow a beard very fast, but I also have like neck hair uh, like like uh Andrew Luck. Um, but when I have to shave it, it gets real irritated. So I finally got talked into from a friend doing laser hair removal on it. Laser hair removal oh is the most painful mm. thing you will ever do. Mm. And as you can see, it didn't take very well. I went nine <laughs> times. Oh, my God. It's like literally the most mean. painful thing. I've had a yes. horse step on and break my big toe. Oh, um, oh I've like dear. broken up my ankle playing sports and stuff like that. Nothing hurt. Anywhere near as badly as every time I have to get this laser shot into my neck, and it didn't even work. So if you have back hair out there, let it let it isn't wave like what, the American flag. Isn't that what they say is like, oh, this painless experience, and come get oh, yeah. your yeah. hair removed at the laser or whatever. Yep. Center. If you listen to all that crap on the radio, yeah. they are lying to you. It's going to hurt so. Badly. They must pay a lot of money to do uh, that. Yeah, to, like to do advertising. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they have to. They to have to hire a bunch of liars. Yeah. <laughs> now we read this. Cool. Now we read this line. Well, yeah. That's clearly a lie. Read it. <laughs> well, today's Bird Brains podcast has come to an end, unfortunately. Oh, mm. no. But it is brought to you by Jonathan Bird's Catering and Weddings and the 502 East Event Center. We're also brought to you by Cancer Treatment Centers of America, Tilson HR, and the Commie Sports Arena. That's proudly sponsored by Jonathan Bird and the Brian Clausen Chasey 200 Tour. Brian's racing at a racetrack near you somewhere because he's racing 200 times, so it's going to be near you probably anyway, really soon. <laughs> yeah, mathematically, if it's 200. And by Rats on a Plane. <laughs> and JoJo, today's winner fun. of the Bird Brain podcast is John Colby. Woo-hoo! And you, you get win nothing. nothing. You what? lose. This is two weeks Good in a row. Day, I want sir. absolutely nothing. What's funny is Good I day, can't. He, listen, for those of you listening, oh, for Caitlin, we call our listeners Caitlin. That's my fiance, and that's the only person we think might even listen that's to awesome. this. Uh, we can't hear that noise that you just heard, but I just noticed on the screen a little thing blinked. It was a five-second audio clip, and it said, you win. So um, the winning sound effect apparently is me losing. Yes. You didn't know you won $700 million. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah you won cool. You just have to call the number that was listed. You didn't yeah. hear Oh, no. Yeah. Replay. <laughs> oh. And it's gone. Well, on that note, I'm going to go uh, try and download this podcast so I can listen to it now. Thanks for listening to Bird Brains. I'm John, as Jonathan, as JoJo, and as always, ladies and gentlemen, the distinguished Connor Daly. Hey. <laughs> and we just want to say, from the bottom of our hearts, we're very, very, very sorry. sorry.